Well, good morning, everyone. I'm just out here in the Long Island Sound doing some kayak fishing this morning. No real plans. I think it's going to be more of a time of day bite. Around 9 a.m., we're going to have our major feeding time. And uh, it might be a little bit more of a bluefish. I'm going to try and find some bunker schools, maybe do some live lining. I'm going to try and do an unedited video. I've been wanting to do one of these videos for quite a while. I got a couple hours this morning to fish, so I'm just going to kind of let the cameras roll out a bit. Might throw the head cam on for a bit just to mix up the angles. Um, but yeah, no real plans for today. Mostly just kind of digging around looking for these bass. All right, well, we got enough light here to start filming. No luck on the SP. I was just trying that while the light was coming up. I'm going to put that off to the side. Start with this purple shad. This has been my go-to lure pretty much all spring. It's crazy, it's uh, 49 degrees out right now. Water is 62. Throw some Procure on here. I'm using a three-quarter ounce jig head. This is an owner jig head. And this is Menhaden Procure Super Gel. Menhaden Procure Super Gel. I'm pretty sure these bass, I don't know if the big ones are going to be around, but almost positive they've been eating blackfish and porgy over here. Seems to be the, uh, seems to be the trend that I've noticed early in, in the morning. Let me just check the lens here. Lens is looking clean and good. Very nice. I'm going to troll this around. See if maybe I can mark a couple fish or maybe hit one and then start casting at them. I feel like these big ones are not really going to be around this morning just because the structure is not as deep as it normally is. So I think they're going to be less honed in on those black fish, but I've got this nice little rip line forming right about here. Incoming tide. Should have the top of the tide at about 10 a.m., I think. No, wait, no. Closer to 9. Anyways, I think that major feed time, I might be off by like an hour. I didn't really check it this morning. But we got some life on the screen. I'm looking at the screen. We got some life on it. I'm going to do a little bit of trolling just to start this morning off. Once that light comes up, the, the bass should start to surface. And then it'll make this a little bit easier. You know, I'm in uh, only about seven to eight feet of water right now. And when it's so shallow like that, really, really tough to, to mark a bass unless it really just swims straight under the kayak, but... So I might just do a teeny bit of trolling with the... with these water levels being so low. And then when I, when I hit a bass, then I'll start casting at them. But... Yeah, I'm gonna start off with this troll technique. A little bit of trolling. Oh, I think I'm seeing some porgy down there. That's a good sign. We're now in 11 and a half feet of water. Making our way out to a little bit of a deeper section. And underneath me right now is a bunch of like boulders. And so early morning, those bass will roll up in here because blackfish they sleep during the night, they're not active at night. So I think what these bass do is, these big bass roll in here. Yeah, I'm definitely marking porgy and what looks like, I don't know, some kind of small fish down there. These bass will roll up in here. Oop, getting bumped. Oop, getting bumped, there's a fish. And I think that they will, all right. So they're at about 11 feet right now, this feels decent. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Wow. 
Wow. Unfreaking believable. This might be a blue. It just shook its head like a bass. Oh, I thought he was off, but he's still on. Just maintain pressure, Bobby. But yeah, this might be one of those big, big fish feeding on the blackfish. Seems to be the trend. Feels pretty good. This feels very good. I'm gonna try and chase him down here. Because he's moving this way. Try and get my line back here. I think this is, this might be a blue. The way he took that run. This might be a big blue fish. It's kind of moving around a little strange. Whoa, brother. Oh, is it a bass? I can't see. Oh yeah, it's a bass. It's a pretty nice one. It's a pretty nice one, not, a, not bad. Like in that slot range, maybe a little bigger actually. Pretty nice bass. Very nice bass. But yeah, like I said, I think that these bass are kind of rolling in here, eating these blackfish. Ah, oh, that's a very nice bass. Let me turn on this camera. So I might, I might stick to the troll just for a little bit longer. Here, I'll give you a peek of this guy. We're gonna release him right away. He's still pretty active. That's a really nice bass. Cheese. Right, let's get him back. These ones are very active. You can see he's already kind of starting to... Nice fish. See ya. Um, so like I said, I think... Whoa, my screen is loaded. Oh my gosh. Yo. I need to show you my screen. I might cut the camera and reroll it just to make sure I got that clip, but look at my screen. It is loaded. Freaking loaded right now. Whoa. Let me see if I can get one right away. This clip is getting a little long, so I might need to cut it, but... Whoa, my screen is loaded right now. I don't even know if those are bass. I don't even know if those are bass. Whoa. That is some big marks. That is some big marks right there. So I think the thing to do is, so he was, I was trolling from that direction. That's how he hit it. So maybe we'll just cast, cast this way. Kind of work that same direction that I was doing the troll at. Which is technically like sweeping with the tide. Let's see if we can get one. Wow, that is a lot of bass down there. They're right behind me, technically. But if there's no bunker around, I'm almost positive these big bass are eating porgy and blackfish. I'm gonna cut and re-roll the camera just to make sure I got that clip. Check, check, check. All right, and we're back. So maybe I need to cast up current a little bit and let it drift back because I think that these bass are sitting face this direction. I happened to just catch one of those bass while it was it probably looked up and saw my lure. I'll let my jig drop to the bottom here because they were completely on the bottom at 15 feet just sitting down there. I'm at 17 feet now. Now I'm a little off, off the boulder, so I'm gonna reset, reset on my drift here just a touch. 
That was a nice bass to start the day off. Really nice. I, I haven't really been measuring them. I've just been setting them back. Just let them get bigger. No need to boost the ego. I just roll that camera behind me. So I've got two angles just in case. I've been having some issues with the GoPro that's rolling right now. It's been giving me some issues. Yeah, this might be a good opportunity to try that flutter spoon again. I was trying it the other day and I was in an area that was loaded with bass. Like the screen was just on fire. And I dropped it down and they were, well, this wasn't yesterday, this was two days ago. They were like bumping into it. It was strange. Like they were like thudding the lure, but not like I couldn't hook them. It was like the it was almost like it was grabbing their attention but they wouldn't take it. It's pretty strange. So let's uh I don't want to be be trolling to get these bass. I want to get them on the retrieve. So I'm going to reset this here. Try and get back on that, that area where I was seeing them. About 13 feet now. All right, I'm starting to see something down there. Starting to see the porgies. I might mess around with the porgies in a bit, but not quite yet. Not while the bass are around. 12 feet. All right. Let's cast and retrieve. Let that drop to the bottom. And start snapping back. Oh, here we go. Starting to see the marks now. Big, big marks. Wow, these are not small fish. These are big bass. These are big bass. Wow, these are very big bass. <laughs> these are the big girls underneath me right now. Wow, these are very large marks. Very, very large marks. <laughs> oh my gosh. It might not be bass. It might be something else, but no, nah, those look like bass. Those look like bass. Wow, there's a lot of them down there. A lot of bass down there. Unbelievable. Maybe I'll try casting this direction. Tide's moving this way. So it might be more of my advantage to let it sweep with the tide. It'll look a little more natural. I'm on the bottom. And it might just be, well, it might be a good idea to just retrieve the lure, not even pop it. Well, maybe a couple of pops. A couple of pops never hurt. There's a lot of bass down there. Unbelievable. Check this lens. Lens is looking good. Camera's rolling. No dice. They're not taking it. 
They are not taking it. it. Might be worth it to do the troll again. Reset the the drift and just hover the lure the lure over their heads. That's how the other one took it. Might be worth it to do that. Cause they're uh, they're being skittish on the cast and retrieve. They are being a little skittish. Could also try that that flutter spoon. Maybe it'll take the flutter spoon. Come on, fishies. Come on, maybe a little slower retrieve. A little slower is what they want. It's a lot of them, a lot of bass here. They're not really taking anything. I'm gonna set this drift. I'm gonna do a little different drift here. I'm gonna reset myself up here and start casting this direction back the other way at them. Usually, I'll just toss the lure behind me while I'm resetting these drifts. Just in case they they want to come up and grab it. Yeah, there's a lot of bass down there. They're being really skittish. Really skittish. kind of doing a diagonal right now. I'm going up to where I think that they are. They're behind me right now. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna reset myself up here, do more of like a U with my pedal and start casting at them behind me. Cause I think that they're sitting a little more like 15 feet right now. Sure, there's some up in the shallows, but I think they're a little closer to that rip line. The rip line's over on the, the port side right now. I've got a feeling they're sitting, sitting right on the edge of it, just kind of waiting for bait to come by and get stirred up. Probably hunting for those blackfish at the same time. There's a lot of bait down there. I think the porgies just rolled in too. So that's good. All right. Feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, there's definitely porgy down there. Probably sea robins too. Yeah, it looks like sea robins. Porgy and sea robins. Oh, big, big, big bass. Big bass underneath me right now. Wow, those are big bass. Those are big bass. Damn, son. There's a lot of bass around right now. Those are big girls underneath me. There's like five of them right underneath me right now. Sitting at 11 feet. Oh, one of them just bumped it. Come on. I know you want this. Oh, one of them just bumped it. Bumped it. Oh man, they're they're like playing with it down there. Come on. 
Wow, there's a lot of bass down there, damn. There's so many bass underneath me right now. Why are they not hitting this lure? It might be something else. It might be like weak fish grouped up. It might be worth it to throw a, uh, a zoom fluke down on them. I've got one of those rigged up right now. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because these could be weak fish like grouped up. So they're not hitting this lure. Normally they would. Dang, that is a lot of fish. Come on, why are they not hitting this? All right, I'm gonna try the flutter spoon real quick. Try this flutter spoon. I feel like this is a good, good time to try it. They're all grouped up on the bottom. Wow, that was a lot of fish. Let's try this flutter spoon. That is so many fish. Oh my gosh. Just to make sure these aren't just all bass grouped up. All right, we're on the bottom. These could be all weak fish. They're not hitting it. There's so many marks down there. What is this? There we go, got one. Oh, he popped off. On the spoon. On the flutter spoon. Kind of bumped into it. Oops. I'm doing something wrong with this flutter spoon. I had one on, but I felt him like bump into it. It wasn't like a hit, it was like he bumped into it. I'm gonna try the zoom fluke on these fish. I feel like maybe they want something a little smaller, but it could also be weak fish, to be honest with you. Very well could be weak fish. So I got the zoom fluke on here. There's not much current. I feel like maybe, maybe they want something. They're all right here. There's a ton of fish. They're just not touching anything. Try throwing some proke here on here. That uh, flutter spoon kind of hurts my arm, to be honest with you. It hurts my shoulder. I need to stand up and do it. It's also sort of boring. It's pretty boring using that flutter spoon. 
so let's try let's try throwing the zoom fluke at him it might be a weak fish and i just have i was throwing too big of a lure at him all right here we go let's try this again let's try this zoom fluke for a bit these fish are being very skittish. Not really taking anything. But they're around. I'm not trying to get them on the troll. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Zoom fluke. That was the way to do it. I knew it. They wanted something a little smaller. It's a nice fish. Problem is this little rod. I might want to throw a zoom on a bigger rod. That zoom fluke, I knew it was gonna get him. They're probably, probably feeding on porgy down there. Cause there's no bunker. I know the porgy just showed up. But it was pretty much instant. Like the second I threw on the zoom fluke, I connected. Seems like they're all grouped up right here. This is a nice fish. Really nice fish. Probably a bass. Feels like a bass. It's got bass head shakes. Very large fish. Probably gonna have a hard time getting these fish up with this little rod though. It's the only problem. So I might wanna yeah, this is a very large fish. I'm gonna turn this other camera on for another angle. Yeah, see, I put a little heat on them. Problem is, I got a pretty small hook on. But sometimes that's what you gotta do. You just gotta sort of problem solve. Yeah, this is a really nice fish. They're all just sitting down there on the bottom. So it might be worth it to throw this zoom fluke on the heavier setup. Or maybe they want more of a finesse presentation. Wow, super nice bass. Oh, wow. Super nice bass. That zoom fluke. Wow, this is like nicer than the first one. Damn, son. This is a really nice fish. <laughs> Sometimes small profile is the way to do it. We tried the, we tried that big profile and he wouldn't hit it. Went to the small profile and he hit it. I think this camera's rolling. Look at that bass. Thing is, so my kayak's 36 inches wide. It's as wide as the kayak. Cheese. That's a nice, nice fish on light tackle, man. I mean, look at that fish. It's a tank. All right, don't, don't gotta be messing around with him too much. He's uh, pretty much ready to go, honestly. Later, buddy. All right, let's try that again. My screen is loaded right now. Maybe the finesse is the way to do it. If you've never messed with the zoom fluke before, I mean, that is the tried and true just freaking works this guy's a little trashed up right now just gonna cut and re-roll the main camera I think but yeah the fish they wouldn't hit the big profile so this little zoom fluke I bent the hook out a teeny bit so maybe I can't put too much heat on him Let's try that again. I'm still on top of them. But sometimes the big fish, you know, don't want big lures. They're feeding on something that's a little smaller and uh, they didn't want that big lure. They wanted something smaller. So it's worth it to try something else. You know, zoom fluke. This is what he wanted. That was a nice fish. I mean, over slot. 
My kayak's 36 inches wide, so, and he was a little wider than the kayak. It's probably like 37, something like that, somewhere in that range. But that flutter spoon, I don't know, something about that flutter spoon is like a little gimmicky to me. I'm gonna put a fresh, um, fresh zoom fluke on here. Cause this guy's jacked up. He kind of bent that hook out, to be honest. It's a little bent. These Gamagatsu jig heads are pretty good, I, I will say. Like as far as the strength, they're pretty good. Yeah, the old uh, Zoom Fluke. What is this one? These are like five inches, I think. They just work so well. I used to just use the Zoom Fluke and the Castmaster. Those are my two lures of choice. And I feel like I should really be getting back into that because they just work so well. So I'm going to reset that drift a little bit. Throw on another zoom fluke. Because he beat that zoom fluke up pretty bad. He or she. When they're that size, I'm not sure if they're males or females. Could be either. That's a quarter ounce Gamagatsu jig head. I'm going to throw some pro cure on here. Could also be worth it to use a white paddle tail. That could probably work too. I'm gonna reset this drift. Is this camera rolling? It is now. Jeez. Cut this camera. But yeah, this video is pretty cool. It's kind of showing the problem solving that I do out here. I try lots of different lures. I mean, because I was sitting on top of them and they weren't touching the purple shad. So I think that it was just luck that I got one on the troll. It was, he probably came up and followed it for a while, but the retrieve is a little harder. Trolling on a kayak is very effective. It's just not that much fun. It also is just, it doesn't require as much skill, unfortunately. But let's see here. Let's try and get one of these bigger bass. It's fun on the light rod, but I'm kind of, it's, I've got to like basically lock the drag down to get him up. That's okay. All right, here we go. Back on top of them. They're sitting at about 11 to 15 feet, right on the bottom. I need to put my glasses on. Yep, here they are, sitting at about 12 feet. If you're wondering what stripe is this, can this read it? Yeah, so that's what bass look like. They got these long swim bladder marks. Let's see if they're gonna hit this zoom fluke again. I need to throw my glasses on. Sitting at that 12 foot mark right now. He went for that zoom fluke. Let's see if I can get another one on the zoom. On the zoom fluke. They're not surfaced at all, they're right on the bottom. I think that, you know, if you. Oh, he bumped it. I think that if you rolled through here and you didn't have any kind of electronics, you'd skip right over these fish. I mean, they're they're literally on the bottom. They're not they're not up top at all. And so I'm just doing a little, letting the jig hit the bottom and then popping it back up, letting it hit the bottom and popping it back up. Tide's moving this way. These look like all bass. I 
And yeah, this little little quarter ounce jig head. That's what he wanted. Definitely wouldn't be scared to use small small jigs for big fish. Not hitting it. They don't they're not hitting it now. I'm gonna reset on top of them. They're being really, really like finicky. Very finicky bass. Oop, here we go. Now I'm on top of them again. These seem like a smaller school, smaller bass. After a while of looking at the sonar, you can kind of tell how large the bass are. Just based on the swim bladder marks. I'm gonna try going a little more mid-water column at them. So they might be looking up, waiting for bait to go by. Maybe the bottom. They got too too long of a look at the, the jig on the bottom. Just throw my glasses on. I wear Hobie. Hobie brand glasses. The main reason why is because they float. I think that sunglass companies need to, especially fishing sunglass companies. Wow, there's a lot of these bass here, man. They're being just really finicky. Right on the bottom. They're right on the bottom. Right underneath me right now. Could be worth it to try the white Elias shad. I wonder if they would hit that because they went for the white zoom fluke. Maybe that's the way to do it. But they're down there. Oh, one of them just bumped it. Like nosed up to it. Come on, hit that lure. Being very skittish. Very skittish bass. Come on. I know you want that piece of plastic. Come on. I'm gonna reset the drift. They're hovered in this one little area right now. Oh, gotta constantly keep checking the lens because when the lens is dirty, that's a pet peeve of mine. I'm gonna cut and re-roll. And we're back. Might be worth it to try the white Elias Shad, like a slightly bigger, a white profile, but slightly bigger than the Zoom Fluke. That might entice them. I haven't been doing very well on white, but he hit there hitting the Zoom Fluke, so might be worth it. It might be worth it. So I'm just resetting to that 12 foot mark. They're in between 10 and 15 feet right now, right in between it. So I'm just constantly resetting to that, to that sweet spot. I think that they're just kind of hovered around right now, just kind of moseying, just being bass. Once that light comes up, they're gonna they're gonna stop feeding. I hear a boat. I hear a boat. Water temperature is actually dropping a little bit. Maybe because I'm close to the rocks. Not too sure. Uh, not 
really seeing them now. I think they're kind of just moseying around. Let that jig hit the bottom. Come on. I know you're down there. Oh, here we go. One just crept up on it. Come on. I know you're down there. Wow, they're being really skittish. I'd love to know what they're eating. It must be porgies. Because the porgies just showed up. They're being really skittish. They're just not really taking anything. So I guess the finesse was the way to do it, but I mean, they're right underneath me right now. There's a lot of them. They should be taking this, but they're not. But they're not. So I think the thing to do is maybe throw the paddle tail on, but use a white one. Maybe they got too long of a look at this, this zoom fluke. Maybe they don't like the zoom fluke anymore. Because there is a lot of bass here. And they are being picky. Just a lot more intelligent, you know. These uh, these larger bass are just a lot more intelligent. Come on. I know you want it. All right, they're starting to move up a little higher in the water column. They're now like mid-water calm. Let me try this, this flutter spoon again. I would love to get a fish on the flutter spoon. Duke. Starting to move up a little higher in the water column now. I know you're not supposed to let the, the flutter spoon slack, so I'm trying not to do that. I would love to know what I'm doing incorrectly with it. I know you're supposed to just let it start falling, but not go slack. All right, I'm gonna switch to the paddle tail. These fish are just, I think that that's, that might be the way to do it. Cause they're gonna finish feeding here soon. So I'm gonna switch to same three quarter ounce jig head. The tide is starting to move a little faster. Hopefully I have, do I have one of these paddle tails here? Do I have a white one? 
Hmm. Maybe behind me, if I have one back here. No, that's not it. That's not it. Is this it? Nice, here we go. All right, let's try this. Let's try a white paddle tail. There's just so many bass underneath me right now. I'm so surprised they're not, they're not really touching anything. So I'm gonna try this white paddle tail, a little heavier jig head. This is a three quarter ounce jig head owner bullet jig head so it can get down pretty quick yeah I could probably make that a little straighter but they should hit it if they don't I'll reset you really want the jig to be pretty straight right up ahead I'm just gonna start casting at them. They should be right over here. Might have to cut and re-roll this camera again. I'm gonna try, because they're start they were starting to move more mid-water calm. Might be able to get them more on just a retrieve. Alright, I'm going to go back to where they are, maybe do more of a sweep. I'm going to cut and re-roll the camera. Check, check, check. Alright, here we go. So instead of casting up current, I think I'm going to try and do more of a sweep at these fish. I think that might be the way to do it. I don't know, let's see. seeing the schoolies today schoolies have been uh oh there's some schoolies i see the schoolies yeah they're over there might be kind of fun to go mess around with them for a sec because these big bass are being a pain in the butt try casting at them one more time they're really not interested in artificial. I think that they're just down there eating porgies. No interest whatsoever. A lot of fish think that one of them would be interested, but they are not. They are not really marking them now too. They might have moved up shallow. Not really marking the fish now. Dang. Those schools, you know, they kind of come in and out. They'll feed and then they'll leave and they'll feed and they'll leave. Be pretty inconsistent. Tempted to go 
over to the shallows because I think that there's some some other fish feeding behind me right now. Or the fish are more close to the rip. They might they might have just moved back a little bit. Try that. Try that. I'm trying to see if those smaller bass are feeding. Yeah, they are. All right, I think because the tide's coming up right now, I think because these these big bass are just really uninterested in lures, um, it's not a great time to be really fishing for them. Let me try. I'm just gonna leave that lure out. I'm gonna go make my way over to this, uh, it's like a hill that meets up with the area that we're fishing right now. And uh, I can see some birds working on top of it. It's very possible that these big bass, now that they've got water to work with, it's very possible they moved in shallow. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave this lure out behind me right now and make my way over to those small bass. And then, uh, assuming they're small, they could be big. You never know. Anything's possible if you believe in magic. But I'm not marking those big bass anymore. And my experience with them this entire week is that They'll come in as soon as the light hits about that, that high in the sky, they are out. I think that they roll in, they eat the porgy and the blackfish, and then peace out, and the schoolies kind of take over. But you never know. Anything's possible. Those birds kind of moved. It might be worth it actually to go back out to the deeper water. Oh no, they're still there. They're still there. Pretty far away. This is, a, this is gonna be a, a little bit of a haul here. But there should be fish over here. There's, oh my gosh. Dude, did you just hear that? Whoa. Oh my gosh, that was nuts. Wow, that scared me so bad. That was a big fish. That was a really big fish that just came up and surfaced. Oh my gosh, come on. Let's try and catch him. I think I scared him. I don't know what I just did, but that fish was big and up on the surface. That was a big one. That was a big fish. That was a big one. Might have been a blue. There's been some pretty big blues over here. It might have been a blue fish. Oh, nope, they're underneath me now. These bass are underneath me again. It's very scattered marks. Like, I almost think these are weak fish. They're right underneath me. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
no interest no interest whatsoever no interest so I would call this like more of a tricky morning of fishing sometimes I just get on a, a lot of them right away but I am trying to do this unedited video today all right I'm gonna I'm gonna move over to the shallows those birds are really going crazy and these fish these big bass are just being a pain in the tush like zero interest in, in feeding. taking anything they're being really really finicky it's possible at like 9 a.m. that these fish are gonna get very active if they hang around the area if they hang around the area though that's the thing I'm gonna turn my light off up here and switch the camera battery go to the bathroom real quick too all right, camera battery is swapped. So I keep this little Pelican case back here and it has all my camera stuff in it. Pelican cases can get wet. I'm gonna grab a, an AHA seltzer water. Compliments to my mother for letting me take the AHA seltzer water. And I'm also gonna get myself stuck on this SP Minnow. Come on, SP Minnow work with me all right let's make a move here now you might be saying Bob why are you leaving those big bass those were really big bass well those bass don't want to eat I I know when they're in a finicky state of mind and not interested in eating and just sitting there and it can be quite frustrating so what I'm gonna do is, those bass might start eating. We rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. We're rolling on this GoPro. What I'm gonna do is hover myself along this shelf. There's a drop right over here. Work my way over to that drop. It's possible the big bass are still here. But I can see a lot of action with these birds right over here in this corner. So I think it's worth it while those big bass are just completely uninterested in artificial lures to go cast at these, these beach fish because it's fun. You know, they're very active right now. When the birds are diving down like that and the fish are surfaced up, that means that they're actively feeding. And sometimes, like the fish that are behind me, they're not actively feeding. They're just kind of sitting there on the bottom, um, which can be super frustrating. You can throw a million lures at them and they just won't take anything. They're just kind of sitting there. And it makes sense with the tide, to be honest with you. They're just not on. That's not the tide that they're on. They're not in the feeding state of mind. And yeah, I'm sure I could do like some kind of trolling techniques to get them to bite, but it's just not fun. I think that you really gotta make sure you're having fun when you're fishing. I mean, maybe trolling is fun to some people, but not me. Got that aha. Uh -huh. Like for example, the two, I've gotten two cows uh, by snap jigging them this year and you know three cows snap jigging I think uh, it's much more rewarding like, to be able to ret retrieve and catch a big bass it's just super fun 
very very rewarding you know and uh, the biggest bass that I caught was snap jigging on the lure that I have trolling right now the 5.5 inch Elias Elias shad and yeah you know you could live line for them that's fun to a certain extent I think it's very productive I mean the fish want bait and you're giving them bait but uh, I just think that the cast and retrieve is just so much fun. So that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm all about. The cast and retrieve. Yeah, there's definitely some bass over here. I can. I just saw one splash. So earlier, when we started fishing, what was that about an hour ago? Something like that. These fish were not surfaced at all. So I think that they move in from the depths and uh, once the light comes up a little bit they'll feed for the first like two hours of light it's interesting the water really dropped it's 61 degrees now it was uh, 62.5 when we first started that's the incoming tide for you um, so the incoming tide is usually colder than the outgoing the outgoing has a minute to warm up and then it pushes back out but um I spent some really big bluefish around that's why i started off with the sp minnow this morning i was getting my my paddle tails bitten off the other day so i'm now starting to get on the shelf oh i see some bass over here now maybe i should move over here i'm seeing more birds over here oh now they're moving back when it's choppy like this it, it can be really helpful to follow the birds around not seeing these bass now all of a sudden that's not good hmm did i make the wrong choice Oh, here's another kayaker. That's fun. Maybe we can interact. Oh. Yeah, it looks like... Hmm. Now I'm in six feet of water. Are these bass still over here? It's a pretty consistent bite over here. tricky with this uh, choppy conditions oh just saw a bird dive down that's a good sign might want to bank a left here huh oh I just saw a bass splash maybe this is worth it oh we're on. Oh, nope, we're off. <laughs> it's probably sea robin or something. They can move they can move pretty quick those sea robins. seeing these bass maybe this was a bad idea oh no there we go. oh no that was a bird that was a bird reel this guy up it's definitely gonna be more effective to cast in this shallow of water Let's see here. I'm looking for just one splash. If I can see one splash, then I'll start casting at them. Not seeing it yet. Not seeing that. Hmm. 
Hmm. This is where the side scan. I've been. My side scan is really bad. It's almost useless, but we'll give it a try. We could try it out. Anything over here? Not seeing anything. Nothing on the side scan. Well, the side scan is only 25 feet out. Might have been a bad idea. Not seeing anything. so shallow over here I'd be able to tell if there was fish I'm just not not seeing them I saw a bunch of birds diving right over here Might be worth it to get more on this hill. There's a hill over here. Let me try that. There's a hill right behind me. Sorry, not behind me, right up here. So I'm not really seeing the bait. So it might be worth it to go on this ledge. These birds are diving over here. The birds are diving over there. But I'm not seeing the fish. So I would consider this to be like a very difficult morning of fishing. The incoming tide in general is not very great in this area. What I saw, those big bass though over near the structure. All right, now I'm on the hill. I am marking some bait over here. Just kind of peeking around. I'm looking for for signs of these bass fish. But I think that they're just on structure. They must just be on structure. Now I'm like in the middle of the hill. Starting to go down the slope right now. So we're just in six feet. Now we're in 10 feet. Not seeing anything. I kind of work my way 
up and around this hill now. Really should be able to see the bass. If they were over here, I'd be able to see splashes. They're pretty, pretty visual when they're over in that area, but I'm not seeing them. It's really not a great tide. I think what I'm gonna do is get back on that structure. Really not seeing, really not seeing those fish. But that's how it goes. A lot of times I'll edit this stuff out like the searching around part. It's not easy finding these fish. I think in the videos I make it look like kind of a highlight reel. And yeah, that's really not how it goes. It's a lot of digging around that happens off, off edit. This is definitely what I would, what I would call a tough morning of fishing. So I'm gonna go back to those finicky big bass. See if I can get them to commit. They might turn back on or they might just leave. Fish finder is freezing up right now. Something about these Lorances, these cheap Lorances, this is a very cheap finder, more of just a sonar. Uh, it kind of frees up. I'm not sure if it's like magnetic fields or how it works, but there's certain areas that mine, mine just completely freezes. Oh, there's a fish. Feels like a bass. I was right on that hill. Feels like a bass. All right. Maybe a sea robin, actually. It's kind of small. This might be a sea robin. It's really not fighting. Yeah, it's a sea robin. I usually let them shake off the water behind the camera lens and then I grab them. These guys like to get the camera really wet. But yeah, they're cool. They taste great. Yeah, that was a sea robin. Um, hmm. I think the thing to do is go back to that shelf and see if I can wait for those big bass to start feeding again. I would know it if if those smaller fish were getting into feed pattern, but I don't, I don't think that they are. I just don't think that they are. Nice thing about being out here at this time of day is it's very, very quiet. These are all commercial boats that are that are out here fishing right now. Mostly mussels and uh, yeah, pretty much all mussel boats. All right, I'll work this deeper shelf again. I'm basically re redoing what I did this morning when we got that first big fish. Not. 
not seeing those small fish. They're much more visual. I can usually see them like splashing on the surface. And I'm not seeing them. I bet you at the high tide outgoing, there's going to be a lot of bluefish around. We're getting close to that. Well, not too close, but... Are those the bass over there? They're right there. These birds have been hovered over this section for a while. Let me try this. Let me try over here. Nah. I think it's just birds on bait. Nah. That could be a waste of time. Eh. Light is just low enough in the sky that the fish could still be there. It's kind of a gamble right now, but let's try it. think I'm better off trying for those big bass just like painfully trying to get them to eat oh that was a bass that oh those are bass those are bass yep we found them we found them all right let's stop this dumb trolling here we go here we go game on here we go I'm gonna cut and re-roll this camera. So I think that we just found them. And that bass this morning got me pretty good. Hand is pretty torn up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Just found them. It's gonna be fun to watch this. Make sure the camera's clean. It's gonna be fun to watch this back and see like the time in between these catches. Cause I would say this is like a medium, medium to slow day, but it kind of shows a little more perspective of what this fishing is really like. A little bit short on that cast. I feel like these fish are gonna be a little deeper in, but I don't wanna spook them. Cause then they're gonna start scattering. But they're straight ahead right now. I know this little hill they're sitting on. There's a little hill right over here. They're in about five feet of water, so they're definitely kind of very like spread out right now. Might be smarter to use that that zoom fluke to be honest with you. Might want to just do that. Where did they go? Might want to just use that zoom fluke. Where did they go? Oh man, this is complicated. Stressful and complicated. No, this can't, it's not stressful at all. This is fun. So there's like a jetty right here. So I think that these fish are kind of pushing the bait up next to the jetty and then circling back and then pushing it up and then circling back. Come on, fish, where are you at? Come on. 
I know you're over here. I think they're right in this little this little section over here. Birds are starting to get a little more stirred up. These fish might have just shown up, honestly, because the birds were very confused. Now they're starting to concentrate right here. Wow, some pretty bad casts this morning. Birds are starting to congregate over there now. Oh, I see the bait that they're on. They're on pretty small bait. Might be over, over shooting with this shad. Might be smarter to use that zoom fluke. Where are these fish? Where are these fish? Hmm. Where are these fish? They're gonna school up eventually, but they might it might just be spread out too. They might just be spread out. Where are these guys at? Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, all right. I think I know where they're at. What mark is this? see with my glasses 29 okay so 29 and they're probably sitting right on that hill over there that makes sense not bad not bad at all so I'm on top of a hill right now Not bad. Nice striped bass. Let's see if we can get another one. They should be sitting right on this hill. It's, it's like, I think the tide just slacked out. These little guys, they can swim very fast. So a little bit of a quicker retrieve can sometimes be the ticket. The bait is very small. It's like a little rain bait. I'm right on top of it. The bass should be, that's what the bait looks like. It's this little, little rain bait. Six feet of water. I'm right on top of the bait. You know what, I think that, I think that zoom fluke is the way to do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna 86 this, uh, this shad here. I think the zoom fluke is the way to roll right now. I just think it's gonna match, match what these fish are eating. A lot better. And also, also that, that jig head that I was using is three quarter ounce. 
it's a little heavy it's going to be dropping you know pretty quickly and these fish are a little more mid-water column in about five feet so it just makes more sense to be using a quarter ounce jig head I'm just gonna hover around this bait. So I'm, I'm right on top of the bait right now. These fish are just kind of racing around like little race cars. They're racing around like little race cars. trying to find a bunch of splashes. Nothing. Nothing. That's just enough chop on the water where I can't really get a visual read of where these fish are. Might want to just go focus on some some bottom jigging. I think we might want to focus on some bottom jigging this morning. Cause these fish, I would be able to to get on a bunch of them if they were schooled up. I don't think that they're schooled up. I think that one that we just got was just cruising looking for this bait because they're in you know I'm, I'm in five feet of water right now they should be schooled up pushing bait like a school you know where are they at hmm Where are these fish at? So I'm gonna go back on this mark. Back on the number 29 Mark Hill. I'm just not seeing these fish. All right, so I'm back on the hill now. Back on the hill. I think I'm gonna go back out to the deeper water. I thought I was gonna be able to get on like a big school of these bass, but I think they're spread out. I think that that one that we got. Check, check, check. All right, well that battery just died. It happens. I've got one of these batteries. It's a new battery too. It uh, it likes to die at 50%. I'm not sure why. And I can't tell which one it is. It's always a gamble to tell. It'll charge up, but it like dies at 50%. I'm not sure why. So I think that those, those smaller bass are not schooling up. I think that they're just kind of moseying around. So I'm gonna go back to the deeper water and troll my way over there with the shad. Those bass over there? I don't know, I'm getting confused now. These conditions are confusing.
toss this over the shoulder. Been doing this thing where I toss it over the shoulder and then start reeling. I've been getting a lot of bass doing that. I just toss it over my shoulder and then start reeling in. It works, I don't know what it is, but it works so well. The I think it's called an alley-oop in basketball. I was looking it up, because I couldn't remember the, the name of it. Yeah, this water's starting to slack out now. Might want to switch to like Porgy or something if these bass out here aren't going to cooperate. Hmm. Oops, sorry for that angle. That wasn't a great angle. Yeah, we might want to switch to Porgy or something. We'll see. We shall see. Just trying to get into a little deeper water before. Damn, that bass really got me this morning. It really bit me up. So we've gotten three bass so far and one sea robin. I think that we've been rolling the camera for a little over an hour, hour and a half. I would consider this to be a slow day at this point. Definitely a very slow day of fishing. All right, now we're in six and a half feet of water. Toss this jig behind me. Trolling with a three quarter ounce jig in, you know, four feet of water, you're just gonna be bumping the bottom. But six to seven feet, I can get it. What am I doing? 3.6 miles per hour. So that can uh, that can work pretty well. It'll be hovered a little towards the bottom, depending upon the tide direction, the direction of the current. I mean, sorry, not the tide, because if those big bass were over here and they were being skittish and just kind of sitting on the bottom, they might start feeding here pretty soon because we're getting into slack. And if they do stay around, it should be pretty good on the outgoing. If they stick around. Sometimes when that light gets up, the bass will just peace out. They won't feed anymore. But those big bass are much harder to catch. Might want to switch to the bucktail. That might be the move. Bucktail always catches fish. Yeah, let's let's try something different. Let's try try the pink zoom fluke. There's just so many fish down there. I don't know why they're not hitting this. I just think that they're sometimes striped bass. They get in this mindset where they just won't touch anything. Especially when they're hovered on the bottom like that. They just they're probably just staring at the lure like, what is that piece of plastic? But the pink zoom fluke, maybe that'll get, get their attention. A little bit of a color swap. Let's try that. Pink zoom used to be my jam. This was my go-to lure. Weak fish really like the pink zoom fluke. Gosh, there's just so many bass down there. But they're just not in that feeding state. Try throwing a little bit of scent on here. If this doesn't work, then I'm gonna go to a much smaller profile. There's just so many fish here, it's crazy. 
There's so many fish, and they're not touching anything. But maybe they'll take this this pink zoom fluke. Maybe they've gotten too many looks at that that white one since their buddy ate it. Maybe they're like, "Hey, I don't I don't trust that that white piece of plastic. I want the pink piece of plastic." I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, just let the lure sit on the bottom. Maybe more of an elegant retrieve. They're basically just like bellies on the bottom. Not touching anything. But they are very, very large. They are very, very large fish. Oh, this is painful. Because you know the fish are there. I mean, we've caught two of them. They're just not touching anything. But maybe when that tide turns, they'll get really aggressive. She just, one just bumped it. One just bumped it. back on that mark they have not moved at all this morning they're just sitting in this one spot 26 27 so I'm gonna start that drift one more time they're huge fish like just massive striped bass but they're just sitting right on the bottom not just not doing anything they're all schooled up, too. Twenty-seven, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and seven. 007. 007 is my lucky mark, and they're right next to it. I always wonder why the fish stack up next to 007. Tricky, tricky, tricky. This is a very tricky bite here. Try over here, maybe. This is the hill I got the other one on earlier. I did see one splash right around it, so it might be just hovered in this area. There's a fish. Fish just bust on the surface right over there.
Yeah, there's fish right there. They're right there, right straight ahead. Right here. Come on. If they don't if they don't take this, I'm gonna switch to that little paddle tail. I'm gonna try one more cast after this. Maybe a slower retrieve. There we go. There we go. Fish on. Slower retrieve. That was it. Is this a sea robin? No, this is a bass. Here we go. All the pink zoom. Not bad one. Not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. Very active fish, that's for sure. It's possible, you know, now the tide's like slacking and they're uh, getting more active. And they're gonna start feeding on that outgoing. Um, Cause the major, you know, the major feed window, not bad, nice little schooly bass. Splashing. So maybe they want the pink bubble gum zoom. It's a pretty tried and true lure. And I just didn't get them on the right, the right tide. So many variables to fishing, you know? I think they're straight ahead. I really want to catch those big bass that are behind me, but they're just not cooperating. So they seem to like that slow finesse presentation. There's another one. Oh, he just bumped it. Wasn't really paying attention. I was looking over to my right. He just bumped it. Dang it. I really think I should switch to that paddle tail, honestly. Get that vibration going. They might be able to sense it. I'm a little further away and kind of call them in. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna switch that paddle tail. Oh, one of them just followed it. Splash right next to me. Yeah, let's do it. Let's switch to the uh, six cents paddle tail. I got other paddle tails with me. I got Z-Man and stuff, but they really like the color of this particular six cents paddle tail. 
I got all kinds of stuff with me, but they really like this for some reason. I'm not sure why. Just... Man, these, uh... Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. These batteries are dying really quick on me. Okay, I don't think it got wet. Hopefully it didn't get wet. These batteries are really dying on me here. Oops. Come on, seat. Don't do this to me. Got two more batteries left. Damn. That's not good. Did that, did that fall somewhere? Uh-oh. Might have just lost the battery. It's the problem with this seat. I don't know if anybody else has one of these Outbacks, but this seat always gives me issues. Getting it to like lock in always gives me issues. There we go. Might just drop the battery somewhere. I've got two more two more GoPro batteries here. And then I gotta stop. Stop filming, unfortunately. I wish my GoPro batteries weren't being so problematic. Just the GoPro in general is pretty problematic. Because that battery died again at 30%. Kind of stinks. Not sure why they die so quick. But this is the Sixth Sense paddle tail. I've been doing very well with it. Clear water rose color, it's called. Let's give it a try. It's a little heavier. I think it's got like salt in it or something. I'm not really sure. Let's give this a try. Tide is definitely a little slacked. moving anymore. I seem to be hovered on this one hill right now. Just being very all the bass are being really picky today. Try throwing a little pro cure on here. Maybe that'll help. Maybe try throwing a little pro cure on here. Let's see two boats stacked up over here in this corner. It's a good little shelf over there, but they might be marking those same fish that I was marking are just being such a pain in the butt. Yeah, there's a lot of like little fish underneath me. A lot of little guys. I'm not sure what kind of fish they are, but Maybe for gall or something, I'm not too sure. A lot of them though.
I think that guy just followed it up. I think I just saw him. So maybe they're just being a little, little picky today. It happens. Might be worth it to throw on a bucktail and go back there and really bounce the bottom on those those striper that are just sitting there and just see if they're eventually going to start feeding. It could be on the outgoing tide. I mean, I think it's slack right now. It could go on the outgoing. You never know. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. It's like I know they're out here. They're just being very, very picky today. We use these birds as a cue, as a visual cue here. Just follow the birds around, maybe that's the trick. There we go. Yeah, see, they're just kind of following the jig. Wow. Wow, that was crazy. Not a bad fish. It's got some weight to it. But he's just following it. That was really interesting. We got some decent weight going on here. They like that little paddle tail for some reason. Or they're just very aggressive. He's not really that big. He took a nice little run there though. A little bit of, a little bit of size to him. He's just fat. Just a fat fish. You are a fat fish, my guy. Look at that guy. He's cool. He's cool. Destroyed the paddle tail, unfortunately. Unfortunately, he destroyed the paddle tail. Ooh, there's some fish straight ahead. Straight ahead, some fish busting. Very curious what those boats are huddled up on. Could be blues, there we go. Next cast. Nice. This must be just huddled up fish now. What mark am I on? Okay, 51, sweet. It's 
getting to be the major feed time. It's pretty interesting how that all works with the pressure and everything. Whoa, tons of bass over here. Tons of bass. Oh my gosh. Big bass just blew up over there. Big bass just blew up over there. It might be worth it to go investigate what's going on behind me now and see if those bass woke up, the big girls. Because I think they fed up and then they called it a day. They're just sitting there and they might be waiting for that active feed window, you know? You know what I'm saying? a decent one they're all schoolies but this is a fatty this is a fat little bass look at this guy choked it that's a nice bass um it might be worth it. We could try casting this direction again, but I think it might be worth it to go try that area where the big girls are sitting. Just in case they, you know, because these bass are starting to get really active. It might be worth it to go investigate. I gotta put some Neosporin or something on this, this little wound here. <clears throat> wow, I think it just, I just got hit immediately. Grabbed it and then let go. Yeah, he did. Wow, three in a row. Damn. Three in a row. I mean, there's no surface activity here. I think that they're just all grouped up. Yeah, so now that these bass are getting active, it really might be worth it to go back there and see. I'm gonna try and catch maybe a couple more of these fish just to see if there's anything decent mixed in, but it might be worth it to go investigate that other area. Because I think that these are small fish. That was three in a row, that's pretty good. This paddle tail is destroyed. Let's see if I can get one more fish out of it. These plastics are expensive. It really adds up. Let's see if I can get one more out of it. Oh, I think I just casted my plastic by accident. Bummer. Dang it. I'm going to cut and re-roll the camera. It's because it's been rolling for quite a while. Check, check, check. All right, and we're back. Gotta change this media card out here soon. That means that we've been rolling for over two hours. It's pretty good. Two hours and I think six bass or something like that. But I really don't think that we were on the major feed window when we started the day. I think that was just a time of day bite. Because there's like different, there's different bites. So like... There's the sunrise bite, then there's the tidal bite. There's two tidal bites a day. Uh, and then there's the sunset. So there's like four times a day that you can catch striped bass, technically. Wow, those, those birds are really focused in that one area behind me, but I think these fish are here. So technically that's, well, I've lost the plastic, but that's like four in a row, all in this one same spot. 
I've mentioned it on the channel before, like when you catch a fish in one area, especially if they're schoolies, it's 100% worth it to cast in the same area. So I think they're just sitting over there. It's gonna be really interesting to look at. So I'm gonna timestamp out the fish that I'm catching. It's gonna be really interesting to look at. Oh, I guess the cat camera was rolling the whole time. It's gonna be really interesting to look at the time when the fish hit and then me look back at the, the tide table of that day. It's gonna tell me, it's gonna give me a lot of information. Cause I honestly think that these fish have been here all morning and they just started feeding. Nice little schooly. Later, buddy. Cause I think that they're sitting right here. I don't know if they're just like staged over here or something, but I think that they're just chilling right here. There's definitely bass busting on that school of birds though too. But this time of day, it could just be bass. I mean, it could be birds on bait, you know? It's pretty common. Oh, paddle tail got a little jacked up. That's the problem with these six cents paddle tails is they get jacked up pretty easily. Probably throw some, some uh, super glue on it. throw some super glue on this on this paddle tail here cut that camera so I don't know if you know about this but when your plastic is uh, getting all jacked up you can take some super glue this guy is really jacked up you can throw some super glue on your jig head. And get a little more life out of it. You just slide it back on there. You can get a lot more fish out of it. It'll just stay stuck. Let that dry for a sec. Yeah, I think it might be worth it for us to make a move here. As fun as catching 300 schoolies is, since it's going to smell like... It's, now it's going to smell like super glue. I'm going to throw a little bit of this pro cure on. I'm going to throw a little bit of that pro cure on. It smells like super glue. I think I'm gonna go roll back to that deeper water and see if those bass are starting to feed. Well, I think I'm gonna call it there. Got some construction going on over here, so sorry for the noise, but you know, I think this is kind of a good video to show you. Um, sorry, I'm hiding my eyes with my sun hood. I think it's a good video to show you what it's really like striped bass fishing. I would call today a kind of slow day of striped bass fishing. But I think it's kind of a cool video to show because I was sitting on top of, so those first two big bass that I caught, right? I was marking them pretty heavy. And for the next like hour and a half to two hours, I grinded away trying to get another one because they were just sitting there on the bottom of the water column. And I kind of think this is a good video to show because you can see, sort of see the grind of switching between different lures and kind of like the trial and error of trying to get one to bite. Probably not going to show this next location that I just hit up just because it was all sea robins. I was trying for fluke to kind of mix it up, but 
you know, I think we got five striped bass today. I'll probably just show the first two hours of uh, this trip just because it's going to get kind of boring. If not, but uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully the unedited, I've wanted to do this for a while. I didn't want to do it with like a banger day just because it doesn't really show the trial and error so much. But uh, yeah, you know, I've never... I've never seen anyone go out and just, just hit bass after bass after bass. I mean, sometimes if it's a really good day and the tides and the time of day line up, but today was considered kind of a crummy day. And we got five bass still kind of grinding it out. But, uh, you know, a lot of these YouTube videos are highlight reels, at least the videos that I put out, just because I think it's more interesting, you know, just sort of seeing fun catches and stuff but it is sort of nice to see the grind every once in a while and I, f I think this is sort of a good video to kind of show that perspective of what fishing is really like uh, which a lot of times is a grind you don't really go out and nail them every time and you like i said today was kind of a slower day um gosh that sun is really bumping I'm going to get out of here and call it but i'll probably just show the first two hours of the day got to go to go go do some other stuff um but thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something i'll answer anything in the comments just let me know and uh i'll see you on the next one peace